Thank you for that introduction. I have long been fascinated by individual decisions, where they end up. To me, decisions are like ripples from a stone that have been cast into the water. And those ripples, those decisions, they can go far, far beyond their original point, and they can actually lap on the shores of far away. When Carol Ribner, who just introduced me and myself, when we were, when we decided to do this, her voice returns, Stories of Forgotten Women, I went right to Google. And I put in Google, Canadian Forgotten Women. And from that, I got realms and realms of stories. But there was one that attracted me so much. And it's the story of Lizzie Sear. Now, I know that there are points of, you know, interconnection between Lizzie and I. I know that. Uh, Lizzie's of mixed race, and I'm of mixed race. And Lizzie had a problem with alcohol. And over 45 years ago, I had a problem with alcohol. She's a woman. I'm a woman. She was born in Canada. I was born in Canada. But there's this other thing about Lizzie. She did not come from privilege. She did not come from that high socioeconomic order. And yet her decisions, her decisions reached power and influence. The little tune that you're going to hear is based on a song I found in YouTube <laughs> called Rosie. Uh, it was 1947, it was published. And so I'm, I'm basing the introduction on, on that particular tune. And so I bring to you Lizzie Sear, the story. Ne na ne na 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 ne na ne na 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 ne na ne na 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 ne na ne na 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 John McKinley Cameron. That lawyer hated to lose a case. And between 1912 and 1932, he had more cases before the Alberta Court of Appeal than any other lawyer. Oh, he was odd. Oh yes, he was quite an oddity. He, well, he wore rubber boots to court. Not only that, but his clothes were mismatched. Oh, for heaven's sakes. And then there was rumors, rumors that occasionally he slept with his dogs in his garage. I mean, really, a lawyer. But one thing about him is that when it came to defending his clients, he was like a bulldog. Oh, my heavens. But he was a bulldog with a heart. Because often he would take in cases from individuals who were of the low socioeconomic order, who really couldn't afford to pay them. And he knew that. He was aware of that. And we're talking about the miners, the Chinese immigrants who, who were held in great disdain at that time. Uh, we're talking about the prostitutes. We're talking about the vagrants. I mean, to be a vagrant back in 1917, well, really, you couldn't prove that's what it meant. You couldn't prove that you could sustain yourself. I mean, if you were found in a barn or a railway station, even an outhouse, and you couldn't come up with how you sustained yourself, well, you could be arrested, charged, arrested, and thrown in jail. It was often used, the vagrant law was, to charge and arrest prostitutes. And Lizzie Sear was a prostitute. She was born in 1888, around five foot six, 
Métis, and as I stated, born in Canada. Uh, she had four convictions, uh, two for drunkenness and two for vagrancy. And this story is related to one of those two that she was found guilty of in terms of vagrancy. Yes, well, she had her customers. I mean, of course, she was a prostitute. Why wouldn't she have her customers? And she did. And one of the customers she had known for about four years, and his name was John James Ryan. Oh, John James Ryan, he really enjoyed the services of prostitutes. Oh, yes, he did. Yeah, and one day Lizzie came up to him because she had no place to stay and asked if she could stay with him just for that day. And he agreed. And that night they had sex and he paid her. And the following day, she wasn't feeling that well. And so he let her stay at his home for that day. But the day after that, she had to go. And she did. She didn't fuss about it. She went. It wasn't long after that, that his penis, yes, his penis, I did say the word penis. His penis uh, had this ooze, this discharge coming out of it. Oh, he knew that he had gotten a sexually transmitted disease. There was no doubt about it. And as far as he was concerned, that Lizzie gave it to him. Mm -hmm. Well, he didn't go to the doctor. Off he went, got the medication, paid the medication, came up to Lizzie and demanded that he, she reimburse him. Well, May, Lizzie made a decision. And she said, no. And then what he did? Well, he went and he got hold of the police. This is a vagrant here. And she was charged and arrested for vagrancy. No money was found on her person. That was May 17, 1917. Hmm. Following day, there she was in court, right beside, may I say, John McKinley Cameron. He took her case. Yes. And she made a decision to have him, right? To fight for her. Well, in that courtroom was also John James Ryan. Oh, the mud he threw her way in that court. Oh, my heavens. He even went so far to say that she shouldn't even be out in the street. She was spreading this disease all around and that he had, she had given him the disease. Oh, he went on and on and on. The police magistrate was one of two women police magistrates at that time, and her name was Alice Jamison. The other police magistrate was Emily Murphy. Emily Murphy, my heavens, at that time. She was a woman's advocate. Oh, but we'll get into her a little bit more later. There was Alice Jameson. And as far as Alice Jameson was basically concerned, Lizzie was arrested, no money. Well, she kind of fit the definition of being a vagrant and she found Lizzie guilty. Well, the bulldog came out of John McKinley Cameron. Oh, yes, it did. Huh. I can just hear him now. Oh, you should read the court transcript. It's incredible. Now, this is 1917. I'll give him this. This is 1917. Uh, 1917, there weren't that many provinces, really, that where women had the vote. Um, it wasn't really all the women that had the vote, but that's another story in itself. But we'll just say that there was just a few provinces that gave the women the vote then. And then of course, there was this whole conversation. I mean, you know the conversation, this whole conversation about the word persons. Was it inclusive of women? Now you may be saying to yourself, what on earth? What did she just say? I, I, I will repeat. Back in 1917, there's this conversation that was it inclusive of women, the term persons, everything defaulted to the men. Well, and I'm telling you, this got Emily Murphy going because she wanted the Senate, right? She wanted to be a member of the Senate. 
And they were telling her, no, 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 no. Even though it was in the British North American Act, this act that first brought Canada together, the term persons, no, they said, doesn't include women. Well, all of this is going on. So now you'll have a little bit of deeper understanding of where I'm going in this courtroom. Uh, uh, like I said, uh, John McKinley uh, Cameron, he was huge in the appeal. And he appealed. And I can just hear him. And he did state it in court, not exactly these words, but the words to the effect of, you're going to arrest all the women as vagrants. There's lots of women out there who can't prove how they sustain themselves. Huh? Why are you picking on poor little Lizzie there? Not only that, not only that, but there's nothing in the vagrant law that talks about her. It's all him this and him that. She shouldn't have been charged and arrested to begin with. She's a woman, not a man. Oh. And then he looked up, eh? Mm -mm. Oh, this bulldog. Oh, it was out. It was out. He looked at the police magistrate, Alice Jameson, and basically said to her, and by what right do you have sitting in that chair there, being a police magistrate? Who appointed you? And by what right did they have to appoint you? There's nothing stating that a woman can hold that position. And he put it in writing. And there were other points of appeal, but those were definitely there in his appeal. Well, up it went, the Alberta Court of Appeal. Hmm. Well, they looked at it and they said, no, you're not winning this appeal. Mm -mm. So he did it again, twice he appealed it. Twice he appealed the conviction. And twice he was told, uh-uh, nope, 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 nope. And Lizzie ended up serving hard time, six months in a place called McLeod in a barrack. Oh, it was a hub of disease and, and just the height of discomfort. That's where she was. And after that, well, there's really nothing much more to be said about Lizzie. She just kind of disappeared. Not her decisions, not her decisions. No, 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 no. But she is a person. There's something notation that she was in a restaurant working or a motel working, something like that. Now, Alice Jameson wrote to Emily Murphy and said, you know, there is this lawyer here trying to take away my job. So Emily knew about all of this. And the thing about it is that when they lost the appeal, when Lizzie lost that appeal, well, all of a sudden there's legal precedent, right? Remember his grounds of appeal had to do with about women. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now it's okay for a woman to be a police magistrate. Oh, isn't that something that can be used? And it was. It was used. Yes, it was. As I said, Emily had her eye on the Senate and she was being refused because the term persons wasn't inclusive of women. And so Emily and a group of women, not Lizzie, I didn't find anything about Lizzie being part of this. Up they went to the Supreme Court of Canada and they posed the question, does the term persons, is that inclusive of women? And do you know what they said? It does not. Supreme Court of Canada. Well, those women got together again and up it went, up the appeal chain, right? To the highest appeal, which was in London, England. And again, the question was posed, but this time it came back that, yes, this is around 1928, yes. The term persons is inclusive of women. And why shouldn't it be? Well, pretty soon after that, women were in the Senate and, you know, on and on it went. 
so some people out there, you know, in the audience listen to me, maybe saying to themselves, well, what has this got to do with Lizzie? I mean, really? I mean, how far can this stretch? It has to do with the women. The women. They were the ones that, you know, went up there and got things done. And others would say, oh, no, it's got to do with that bulldog lawyer. And some would say, it's got to do with both. And, and I say, I'm not saying no to that. But I'm just saying, hold on. Just hold on there. Just hold on. Let's go back. You got London, England. She goes back to the Supreme Court of Canada, which goes back to the Alberta Court of Appeal. Hmm? And then there's Lizzie, eh? Oh, yeah, it, there's Lizzie. You know, Lizzie had choices. I mean, she, she may not have had wealth, but she, there were certain choices. I mean, when uh, John James Ryan came to her and demanded a payment, she could have said, because a prostitute, and maybe she knew other prostitutes that, you know, owed her a favor. I mean, I don't, I don't know. This is a storytelling coming out of me now. It could have said, well, I can't pay you, but I can do X, Y, Z. Or I can get so-and-so to do ABC. So it's kind of like payment in kind. But she didn't do that. No, she did not do that. She did not cower. And she was not timid. When it came to a lawyer, she could have said, no, I'm just going to plead. I don't want to bother with that. I'll just plead. But she didn't. She did not cower. And she was not timid. And when it came to the appeal, she could have done the same thing. She could have said, no, I'm not going to go for the appeal. But she did not cower and she was not timid any more than those women cowered and were appealed. They used whatever resources that they had. And Lizzie's case was one of those resources. It just didn't go to the Alberta Court of Appeal. Like that ripple from a stone thrown in the water, it went to other shores. Oh, yes, it did. Most certainly. It ended up in the Supreme Court of Canada being reviewed. It ended up in London, England, the highest appeal court being reviewed. Oh, yes. All being reviewed. All Lizzie's case. And so you just got to connect the dots back down. And there she is. Oh, Lizzie. Lizzie, a person who did not cower a person who was not timid. And so I introduce you to Lizzie, the one who did not cower, the one who was not timid, and the one deserves to never be forgotten again. Yes. Na 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 Ne na ne na 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 ne na ne na 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 ne na ne na 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 na. Thank you for listening. That was great.